I've got you guys covered. For those of you wanting to get wins, I've got the most ratty meta formations and tactics. So you can choose the one you want and you're going to get wins in the weekend league. If you're tired of coming up against teams like this, you can get some foot coins through MMO EXP using the link down below. You can also use code JAMBU for 5% off. So guys, as I said, I'm going to be helping you out with the current best formations in the game. Don't hate me, okay? Hate the game. It's just one of those. Whatever works is going to work and people are going to use it. So we may as well match them. This is 100% going to help you guys out. If you do enjoy it and they help you, leave a like, subscribe for more videos like this and I will help you become better at FIFA. We're going to be looking at the 5-2-2-1, the 5 4 one and the 3421. So let's get into the video and drop me a question down below if you've got anything to ask. Okay, so the first formation we're going to be looking at is the 5221. This is a this is a beast formation, man. It's not what I think most people consider the meta meta that would go to the 541. But this is very good, so let's have a little look at this, and remember to stay around for the instructions, because they're super important to how these formations actually work. So the 5-2-2-1, obviously it's a 5-back. We'll talk about sort of everything else after we've actually looked at these tactics, but we've got 65 on the depth, balance, 40 whip, balance direct passing, 40 whip again. A little voice crack from me there, jeez man. Uh, six players in the box, one on the corners and free kicks because I only do one sort of corner and it doesn't require any more than one person in the box. You always have that back post runner. I take mine short, little step over outside and cross to the back post. I'm sure a lot of you have seen that if you are, um, you know, if you've been around my channel a while. But this is how it lines up. So obviously you've got the five at the back. You've got the two centre midfielders and you actually have two wide players as well as the striker. So... What tends to happen in this formation is with every five back, those two wing backs turn into attackers when attacking, and then they'll be in line with your three centre backs when defending. That is what makes these formations so broken. But you're going to have the wing backs overlapping those wingers in attacking areas. So you're going to have two centre mids that are attacking. You're going to have wing backs overlapping the wingers that are also attacking, and a striker as well. So when it comes to, you know, getting at your opponent and creating chances, you're going to be able to do it in abundance here. There is so many options when going forward. You can see we've got come back on defence, cut inside and getting behind on the wingers. So you may be wondering why the cut inside. So if you think of like a 3-4-2 one, for example, that has the left and right forward, that is what I'm going for here. You're turning them wingers into inside forwards when attacking. And then, of course, you want them to come back and help the defence as well. Hence the comeback on defence. So, stay central, getting behind on the striker. If you're feeling really ratty and want to sacrifice your attack a bit, you can set him to come back as well. But I wouldn't recommend it because the one striker is useful on the counter attack. We've got cover centre on the centre mids. They're just going to stay in the middle. They're going to contribute to the attack, helping defence. You just want sort of box to box players. So Kamavinga and Chavi Simmons are perfect for this. You know, just ideal, that sort of player profile. You can see in the wing back position, I've got Bergwijn here. You can literally play anyone. If you've got Golden Bappe, he will be a great wing back. They don't need to be able to defend, although it can obviously be helpful at times. Uh, but you can see the one instruction we've got on the wing backs is overlap. And that is super important. These five back formations do not work as well if you don't have this overlap on. So make sure to get on that. And that is the 5-2-2-1. Let's have a little look at what is considered to be the best formation in FIFA right now. The 5-4-1. I like to play a little bit of a higher line with this. We've gone with the 72 depth. We've gone a little bit more on the whip. This stuff, I mean the whip especially, it's not really too important. I would say the most important things are the depth you use. And then also like the players in the box and possibly the attacking whip as well. But the defensive whip, I don't really notice too many differences. We've got direct passing, seven players in the box. And then, I mean, this just doesn't really matter. I can have it on one, I can have it on two, doesn't really matter. You can see here 
Obviously, the difference compared to the last setup is we've got left and right mids instead of wingers. So, by default, this is just going to be a bit more defensive. You don't really notice a hindrance in attack. I've seen a few comments of people saying that attacking in this formation, they struggle with a bit. My biggest tip when it comes to attacking in the 5-4-1 is you do have to be a little bit more patient. You just don't have the counter-attacking options as much, but in the build-up, it is fantastic. But you are just going to have to be aware that sometimes you've just got one striker up there, and that is that. So that is how it works. Instructions... Um, I've just got balanced on my striker, nothing at all, and that seems to work pretty well. For the midfielders, you do want those on cover center. The same as all these formations, really, I do recommend cover center. Cover wide is not bad, um, but it's just better for different types of formations. Like People have a misconception that this cover wing just means they sit out on the wing, which is not the case. It basically means that, you know, say... You're in a 4-3-2-1 and your right centre mid has cover wing. It means if the right back goes forward, he will then slot in there. I hope that makes sense. So you do want cover centre because we just don't ever need to cover a wide position with our centre mids. We've already got two wide players here. So overlap, of course, on the fullbacks again. And this, this formation is honestly just gross. Like you defend in a flat five. You have four flat players then, you know, just ahead of them. And then you have sort of your striker who you can use for counter-attacks and stuff. But just having a flat line of five, a flat line of four, it's just very, very, very overpowered. It, it just is. It's You guys will see when you play with it. I'm sure you've played against it as well. But trust me, trying to break down someone who's good in a 5-4-1, it's just not fun. And that ultimately, that is what you want. You don't want your opponents having fun. That's the harsh truth. I'm sure you guys agree with me. You're in it to get that win and get them team of the season rewards. So finally, we are moving on to the 3-4-2-1. And I quite like this one. Um, to be completely transparent with you guys, these five and three backs, a lot of it does just feel the same. It really doesn't because, you know, the left and mid, you, the left and right mid, sorry, that you have in a three back is basically the wing backs you have in a five back anyway. So it's one of those. But anyway... We've got the 60 depth here, direct passing, corners and stuff just doesn't really matter. You can have that on whatever you want. We've got six players in the box, and that is how I line it up. So you can see we've got three centre-backs. For the wide players, again, you can use, uh, for the left and right mid, I mean, whoever. You know, they don't have to be able to defend, although it can help. Uh, someone like Kudos there, who's got decent defending, but also good going forward, is perfect for it. You have so many attacking options in this setup, it is unreal. I think it could be the best formation in the game on an attacking basis. You can occasionally get let down by conceding counter-attack opportunities due to the fact that the natural placement of your left and right mid is higher up the pitch than a wing-back. But it is super effective, man. Stay central, get in behind, and stay forward on all three of those forward players. We've got come back on defense, stay wide, and get in behind on the wide players. So you're going to defend in a five back. You're going to attack with seven players, including the center mids. Grossly overpowered. We've got cover center on those. Although, you know, this is a possibility. You can try out the cover wing. Um, just in case one of those left or right mids goes charging forward, there is going to be a big space there because they do overlap the other attackers but that is going to be that guys you are going to get some wins with this so i'd really appreciate if you left a like make sure you do subscribe as well we upload the best custom tactics on youtube hands down so hopefully you enjoyed please do subscribe i'll catch you on the next video and peace